Hello Codebreakers and welcome to the only tutorial that you'll need to learn and understand the React Hook use effect. I'm Lucas, I love long walks on the beach but I hate long intros, so let's get cracking. I've already created my React app with Weed and I've prepared this little application here. So what this does is it essentially just displays the current state here at the bottom and with these three buttons we can change the current state. So pretty basic and straightforward. And now we're going to add the use effect hook to this application. But before we continue, if you're not already familiar with the use state hook, then make sure to check out my 8 minutes tutorial about it first. I will link it in the top right corner of the video as well as in the description box down below. And now let's get started. Use effect is a React hook that is used to perform side effects in your application. If you have already worked with class components before, you're probably familiar with using the lifecycle methods for mounting and updating in order to create different types of side effects. But inside of function components, we don't have these lifecycle hooks, but we have the use effect hook for that. By using this hook, we're essentially saying we want to do some form of side effect whenever something happens. So the first thing that we need to do is import use effect at the top. We can just put it right here next to where we import the use state. Like so. Below that, but above the return statement, we can now use the use effect hook. We only have to say use effect like so. Now inside the parentheses here, we can add a function. And then this function will run every time this component gets rendered. So once initially when the component first loads and then also every time the component gets re-rendered. And most of the time this happens as a result of state changing. So every time we click on one of those buttons, uh, we change the current state. Therefore the component gets re-rendered and the function that we put inside here will run. So let's add an error function inside the parentheses here. And this function should console lock something. Let's say we want to console lock the string use effect run. Like so. Let's save and take a look at the console in the browser. So, as you can see, with uh, every change of the state, we get the console lock again. One last important piece of information before we move on to the next chapter. The use effect function runs after the component is rendered. So first it returns all the elements inside the return statement here and only after that it runs the use effect function here. Make sure to keep that in mind for later. So like I already mentioned, right now the use effect callback function runs every time the component gets rendered. If we don't want that, we can use a dependency array. The use effect hook has two arguments. The first one is a callback function, also called setup function, and the second one is the dependency array. The dependency array is used to tell the use effect function what it should react to. This means React will compare each dependency with its previous value, and if something has changed, it will run the use effect function. So the dependency array basically tells the hook to only trigger when the dependency changes. It's optional and if you don't add it at all, just like we have it right now, um, the effect runs after each render. Now let's add a dependency array. We have to add it um, right here after the error function, like so. Now if you have a dependency array, but the array is empty, like in our case right now, the effect runs only once after the initial render. That's what you want if you, for example, fetch data from an API endpoint. Or you have an array that actually really contains a dependency. For example, we could add uh, our state variable here, which in our case is also called state. Let's save. And now the use effect callback function gets triggered on two occasions. First, when the page initially renders and second, uh, whenever the state variable is updated. So in our case, every time when we click on one of those buttons um, and change the state. 
if we double click on the same button, it won't trigger anything because uh, the state only changes when we click on a different button. You can also add multiple dependencies. Uh, you just need to separate them with a comma, like so. So, for example. Basically, every reactive value that is used inside the use effect hook must be declared as a dependency. Reactive values um, include props and all variables and functions that are declared directly inside of your component. If a value is defined outside of a component, then it is fixed and it won't change when the app is running. So React doesn't need you to add it to the dependency array. In general, I would say that there's no point putting stuff in there that won't change and it's also useless to put a ref in a dependency array. If you're just starting out, this general rule and the exceptions I just mentioned are enough to get you going quite away. So don't worry about the rest for now. The use effect hook also has a function that allows us to stop side effects that no longer need to be executed. It's called the cleanup function and by using the cleanup function we can cancel active requests and ensure that our application behaves correctly. This cleanup function is optional, so it will only run if you provide it and in most of the cases you only need a cleanup function if you connect to external systems. In this context external systems means any piece of code that's not controlled by React. For example, to clean up timeouts, intervals and event listeners. Or to cancel a fetch request. It's important to know that after every re-render of your component where the dependencies have changed, React will first run the cleanup function with the old props in state and then run your uh, setup function with the new values. And your cleanup function also runs one final time after your component is removed from the page, so after your component unmounts. Now let's take a look on how we can actually implement a cleanup function in our application. Use effect is built in such a way that we can return a, fun uh, a function inside it. And this return function is where the cleanup happens. So below the setup function here, we say return, then we add an arrow function And inside here, we place our cleanup code. Like so. Let's create a real example. Let's say we uh, want to use the setInterval method here to call a function at specified intervals. So let's add setInterval. Next, we assign the setInterval to the variable interval, like so. Then let's wrap this console log function inside an arrow function. And put it inside the set interval function. And then we also specify that the interval is 2000 milliseconds. Like so. Which means uh, this function will run every two seconds. Now I don't want to go too much into the details here, but we have to make sure that to that we clear this function, uh, this interval, before our component unmounts. Otherwise, we could get problems with memory leaks timing issues uh, or even performance issues. So to clean the interval, we jump down into the return part of the use effect hook and uh, we add the clear interval method. And inside the parentheses, we add our interval ID. In our case, that's interval, like so. Safe. Now every time this component gets rendered or re-rendered, it first returns all the elements inside the return statement here. So everything inside here. Then it will run the uh, use effect cleanup function and only after that it runs the use effect setup function. So that's the execution order if you also add a cleanup function. 
That's it for this video. Make sure to destroy the like button if you enjoyed it, subscribe to stay up to date and I'll see you in the next video. Ciao!